Nya nya everyone, this is Thermite, and this is Weekly Shonen Jump for the week of March 31st, 2019. On the cover we have, ooh, well this is last week's cover, I'm sure they've updated it. Mm. Hmm. Well, hmm. I guess they just haven't updated. Which is very strange, because if you look at this, like, Hell's Paradise Jigoku Raku also updates on, you know, on the 31st. It clearly came out. None of the WSJ series updated, though. Hmm. Well then, <sighs> I guess we can't read Weekly Shonen Jump right now. So instead, why don't we check out some old series from the archives that I have not checked out yet? That's right, this is a sneaky episode of Chapter Ones, the flagship series of this channel, which might come as a great surprise to you because I have never, ever, ever put out an episode of Chapter Ones on this channel. Or rather, when I like updated this channel, when I took all the stuff from my old channel, I put it on, there's some chapter ones from then, but I've never done an actual fresh episode chapter ones on this channel. <laughs> so, um, I already read R Love Rush, like, I read it as it was coming out. It's, it's pretty good. I really did like it. Uh, basically, it's a, um, Supernatural Harem series. Main character is not attractive, but he has, like, pheromones that make everyone think he's attractive. Except for his childhood friend, who he's madly in love with, because she's the one girl in the world who isn't in love with him. But it turns out that his pheromones also attract supernatural beings, including, you know, the other main girl who is an angel looking down upon him from heaven. It's it's a wild series. Uh, Red Sprite, I really liked this one. Like, I also can't choose this as a, you know, a new series because I did check it out. It was done by the guy who did, um, not Iron Giant, um, Iron Knight. Which, if you haven't read Iron Knight, I would highly recommend it. Definitely better than Red Sprite's. Like, uh, Red Sprite's about this kid traveling the world. He's got a uh, Zeppelin. Uh, Iron Knight, though, was about... I don't even want to spoil it. Like, if if you can find it, find the one-shot. The one-shot is really well done. I was very surprised that it ran in Jump. It's, you know, it's edgy more so than other things in Jump. Uh, Robot X Laser Beam, really good series as well. It finished. I don't know why the archives do not have more than Chapter 3 up. Like... It's all it's been concluded and it's a really good series like it did really well in Japan until a certain arc not even until that arc like it went on beyond that arc in serialization but in the volumes when the volumes hit that arc it dropped it dropped massively the series got canceled as soon as the volumes went past that arc the, the volume started selling really well again <laughs> like it really just comes down to they had a stinker of an arc and it turns out you can't do that in weekly show and jump anymore uh the emperor and I I have never looked at this like, when they started doing um, Weekly Shonen Jump on the web, which I think was Weekly Shonen Jump Alpha? Was was it Alpha? When that happens, like, they put out, a, they started doing a few web-only series. The Emperor and I was one of them, which I have never actually looked at. I assumed it was a gag series. Oh, they actually have, like, volumes out for it. Okay, that's pretty cool. I mean, I guess if it's doing well enough on the web, they would, you know, they would do volumes. I just didn't consider it. Hmm? Nani? A penguin stuffed in the fridge. I mean, I don't know if people really have penguins as pets in Japan. I mean, I, I think everyone's seen Evangelion. Everyone knows about Pen Pen. So I've always thought that, you know, oh, the idea of a penguin just living in your house is a funny idea. And I know there are some people in real life that have done it. Or, you know, there's that one penguin whose uh, owners, like, give him a little pouch with uh, money in it. And he goes down to the market and buys fish. But like, is this a thing? Is this a phenomenon that actually happens? I mean, I assume, uh, you know, Emperor comes from the fact that he is an Emperor Penguin. <laughs> okay, I mean, is he alive? Seems to be the right size. <laughs> yeah, okay, don't freak out. I found it stuck in the fridge. It's a penguin. <laughs> hmm, okay, well... I, I honestly assumed, like, the way this kind of thing is usually set up, I assumed, it, like, her mom would come in and been like, oh, yeah, I bought that at the store or something silly. But they're treating it pretty seriously. <laughs> okay, so it's not even that they're saying, you know, we need to keep it. The penguin itself is like, nah, I don't want to go back. So this, did this penguin break out of the zoo and, like, sneak into their house? <laughs> I don't have the heart to get rid of it when it's looking at me with those eyes. What eyes? Okay, let's have him, let's have him decide. So, of course, naturally. Let's see which smell he eats first. 
<laughs> Wait, how did that work? I guess the like it was still wet. So he like he branded himself with it. He didn't Oh no, he did actually eat it. I did he? Is it still on the ground? No, it isn't. So I guess he must have. But that's a weird belly flop. Because he specifically does not eat the you know, he doesn't eat the smelt first. Huh. Does he have some sort of like super intelligence? <laughs> Okay, so that was chapter one of the Emperor and I. Um, unlike normal chapter ones, like in general, the uh, the thing I did before where I said like, oh, when uh, I do chapter ones, I'll decide what series I'm going to pick up here and there. Like, that was a bad idea. I'm not going to do that. Um, I did really like the Emperor and I, though. I, hmm. Like, if I'm going to rank these, which I may as well, why not? I guess I'll put it right in the middle because I didn't read anything else today. You know, that's that's kind of how it goes. But it's a good series. I'll probably check it out. I'll probably read some more of it. But like with any of these series, I can't put these on the channel, like because they're all Shueisha series. Even if they're not jump series, they are owned by Shueisha. I mm, like these. They've been the ones I've been taking down a ton of uh, manga reactions on YouTube. So it's it's a scary time. I most likely will not touch this then. Or if I do, it'll have to be like on the full Thorai Kitty experience as like an exclusive, which is odd. It feels odd to do exclusive series just for my archives, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Naruto, I was there from very early on. I remember like one of my first acts of anime snobbery ever, like when I was, I think like an eight year old or something, like very young, was knowing that Naruto was on and being like, eh, it's not as good as the old series. It's no Inuyasha. But I have read all of Naruto. It's I do genuinely like it. I think people give it a really bad rep because, like, people want to hate on a popular series. And of, you know, the, like, the big three that America used to think of, One Piece, Naruto, and uh, Bleach, Naruto was always the easy one to pick on because it was very consistent and whereas Bleach, you know, goes out of its way to be so, like, indulgent in its flaws that you have to like turn yourself around and decide like oh yeah either it's a bad series or it's a series you're enjoying even with its flaws whereas with naruto it's much more middle of the road it's much easier to hate upon it but i still think it's i wouldn't call it an underrated series that seems wrong but i think people don't give it the credit it deserves it is a good series astro lost in space now this is a fantastic series like legitimately fantastic right now if you can read it like I'm pretty sure the first three chapters are free. Read those right now. If you have the archives, read the whole series. They have like these uh, 0.5 chapters that came out. Like they're not Omake from the volume, though they are in the volumes. It's more like they just kind of came out alongside the normal chapters when it was being serialized on the internets. But it's a fantastic series. It's getting an anime adaptation pretty soon. I'm very excited about that. Um, basic premise. Uh, like, Astra, Lost in Space, it's five kids, or I think it's six. These kids get, uh, like, they're on a, uh, like, a space camp trip. They go through a wormhole by accident. They end up lost in space, and they have to travel home. That's a very simple premise. It's very easy to wrap your mind around, but it's extremely interesting. Like, the character dynamics become very, very important. And I love everyone in the cast. Like, there is not a cast member in the series that I do not like. Highly, highly recommend. Like if I if I were to rank all of these, not just the ones I'm reading, blind, uh, it would go like Love Rush. Uh, didn't really like Red Sprite very much. Uh, robots, robot would definitely be RXL. Uh, Naruto. Almost certainly above Robot X Laser Beam, but which is kind of tricky. But I mean, like, yeah, like if we're talking about entire series that I have read as compared to, you know, series I'm reading one chapter of, meh, it's it's inherently uneven. But Naruto is definitely high up there. Astra definitely above Naruto. <laughs> like it is legitimately that good. If you want a, you know, just to read a manga, I would recommend Astra above like any of the others so far. It's it's that good. It's just really fun, especially if you like sci-fi. Uh, Judy Tyson, I read a bit of it. I read um, when the um, like when Shonen Jump used to come out as like a digital magazine, 
they brand like I think two chapters of Genie Tyson in it. I also did read the first chapter of the uh, the manga, and I did I watch the anime? I might have. I watched something from the anime, but it wasn't like a full episode. It might have just been like the, a clip of the opening, just to see if it was the same as the manga or not. But interesting thing, it was by uh, Nisoisin, I guess. Was it Nisoisin? Yes, from the creator of Madaka Box. I love his work. He wrote, he's written a lot of very interesting things. A lot of light novels for other series. Uh, most importantly, most likely you'd, you'd know him from uh, the Monogatari series. Uh, Jinny Tyson came out as a, like, a media project. Like, it's not like it started off as one thing and then was adapted. The anime, the manga, and light novel all came out around the same time. So, I've... I have high hopes for it. I know some like spoilers about it. I might check it out eventually, but eh, not right now. Eldive. I know nothing about this. This is another one of those. Um, I think it came out around the same time as the Penguin and I, like when Jump was really trying to push the fact that they had a uh, web exclusive series. Zany Space Adventure by the Creator of Reborn. I remember uh, like the reason why I ended up picking Astra Lost in Space was because the translator for Astra, along with you know a bunch of other Jump series, specifically like uh, she's on the Weekly Shonen Jump podcast, the official one, the one that Viz supports, and she would repeatedly like week after week say, "Hey guys, Astra Lost in Space is so good. Please check it out. It's amazing. Everything else you're reading is garbage. People who don't like Astra Lost in Space are garbage." <laughs> They had to silence her on the podcast repeatedly because she would not stop talking about how stupid the readers are if they do not read Astro Lost in Space. Which, I mean, you could call that negging, I guess, but it got me to read it. Whereas with Eldive, no one was pushing for Eldive. No one wanted me to read Eldive. But that just means we can check it out right now. Chapter 1. Ah, uh, Chapter 1. Shuta, the voice in the qualifying exam. Um, why do I... Okay, so we're like, we're looking at this from the perspective of aliens, I guess. Hmm. I mean, I do like these uh, character designs, but I can't tell what they'll look like in black and white right now. Like, this was also the promo image they had on the, um, you know, on the collection page for all the chapters. And the coloring style is really interesting. I think the shading is very distinctive. But, hmm, like, it, it feels very unique. Not sure if I like it or not. Okay, there's even more color pages. <laughs> okay, so he's just giving a monologue. Kokonos, stop ignoring your teacher. Usually I would read it as Kokonose, but I assume because he's, you know, smelling, uh, like the nose part probably is meant to be a pun. I don't know if that's not normal. I feel like that's extremely normal, especially in manga, but just in like normal school life. I feel like everyone's had that moment of, you know, just zoning out and not even realizing the teacher is there for a little bit. <laughs> and you said at least we can go home once the speech is over right in front of him. I mean, I guess that is like it's still clearly a thing that people do in Japan, but it's, I guess it's much less acceptable. And that is pretty, like, blatant. Is the whole series color? I mean, usually I wouldn't think that, but especially because I, I'm pretty sure Eldive was a, like, web exclusive. It could be entirely in color. Though I know there is also, like, a print release, and it would be insane if they did, like, a full color print release. The alternative would do, be, like, you know, a black and white print release when the series was originally in color, which seems like a bad idea. Like, I don't think I would pick that up. That seems really bad. Hmm. Okay, so he is legitimately very skilled at home ec. Okay. The cooking club is about to enter a contest, so how about joining the club? I'm not just pretending to be aloof. Okay, I really don't want to do it. I gotta help Auntie with chores. Huh. So, it, like... It is a like it is a character quirk, but it's also something he does genuinely. Wait a minute. I'm not just pretending to be. A, was he reading their minds? Huh. It's because I hear this voice. It's your bad habit, Chuta. Being all negative and pessimistic, no self confidence, huh, Chuta? 
Okay, interesting. Yeah, like, it does feel a lot like multiple personalities or some sort of, you know, like schizophrenia, but I assume from, like, the premise of the series that it's got to be, like, an actual alien speaking into his mind. Yeah. I mean, I do appreciate that. They're not treating it as a superpower or anything. It is just, like, it's a genuine problem in his life that he's kind of has had to deal with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Is that their teacher? I don't know if you're allowed to do this as a teacher. Jeez. Blah, blah, Judah. Blah, blah, am I right? Oof. Big oof. Cute face, but harsh words. What a difference. But I can, I can appreciate that for sure. That's... Oh, boy, that is tough. I'm really surprised that people keep on, like, trying to bring him into things. Like, I'm not against that. I think that's pretty cool of his class. But, like, especially because he's done this for so long. Like, he's isolated himself, and he is the weird guy who constantly talks to himself. Like, they're honestly pretty commendable for repeatedly trying to engage him, even though it's clear he's never going to say yes. So, the voice notices things that he doesn't. And, like, especially here, we're seeing that this isn't the voice. Like, it's just a third thing. Which makes it even stranger. Like, is there someone talking to his voice? Like, talking to him from outside? Or is he, like, is there literally something inside of him that is, like, possessing him? Maybe. It also doesn't seem to understand anything. Like, it doesn't seem to, like, if it was saying, like, Oh, it's a, you know, Gargablarg. If it's, you know, this alien word, then I would think, oh, maybe the voice is some sort of weird alien. But it's using terminology that he would understand. Okay. Hmm, so it it's Inspector Chips. Presumably, like, I assume the voice is, like, why he is interesting to the aliens for whatever reason. But also, what was his plan? What was this technique he was going to use to try and keep him here? Okay, I live in a muffin shop. Like, not even just a bakery, a specifically a muffin shop. Aw, oh, this is nice, though. Like, I wonder if he does, like, talk to the voice while she's around, though. Like, anytime we have a setup where, you know, someone's suffering deeply and someone else is, you know, the one light, you know, the one ray of hope in their life, it always makes me extremely worried. Like, something bad's gonna happen to them. Either something singularly bad is going to happen to them early on, or the series is going to involve them being in peril constantly. Though, to be fair, I don't even know what genre L-Dive is. Like, I knew it was vaguely sci-fi themed because of the, um, the covers and stuff, and, like, the ads that they put out, but I don't know if it's, like, is it a rom-com? Is it a serious series? Is, there a, is it a battle shonen? I don't know. Yeah, the voice is... it's very simple. It is talking down to him, but even when it wasn't talking down to him, like, hmm, I guess it's meant to be, like, it's meant to sound like it's talking to some sort of pets. But even before, like, weird little imp, weird little imp, I guess when I was reading that, I assumed that it was the voice that didn't understand what was going on. But I guess it could also be the voice talking down to him and being like, oh, you wouldn't know what this is, so I'm just going to call it a weird little imp. Hmm? Okay. So, I guess it's here, and also it's... What is it eating? Is this weed? It's definitely not weed. Okay, then. I mean, I, there's really no hiding this from her, then, unless they can, like, wipe her memory. By the way, I really do like the style right now, where, like, at the very start, when it was trying to be very high-detailed and painterly, it was, it was still good. Like, it looked good. But I think I like this more. It's this very, like, light watercolor. Like, it's light watercolor, and it's not afraid to be low detail at times, which I really appreciate. Like, it's not overwhelming looking. Oh, it was eating tea leaves. Really? From, like, a... It looks like a chip bag, though. Like, I don't think I've ever seen someone store tea leaves in something like that. Okay. So, I guess he's just being abducted now. Okay. Well, he's going to space. These shots are very, um, like, Webtoon-esque. Like, with the very realistic, very clearly digital shots of, like, the, uh, the moon and of Earth. 
Like I okay, I'm 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 okay with that kind of contrasts. It looks sort of weird. I kind of wish they'd put more of a filter on it, but it's not bad necessarily. But just like the contrast here between this ship and the very realistic moon, it's it's a bit much. Hey, <laughs> she looks pretty cool. Oh boy, this guy, like, the shading on him does not look good. I mean, I guess it's because it's like gray and then black. Like, I pre. I appreciate that the details at the very least are drawn with whites, but it's, it's still real rough looking. Okay, we are Space Police L Dive. So that's what L Dive means at the very least. Huh. You know, I honestly don't know what I want more. Like, there's the potential of, you know, it's almost certainly the voice in his head is some sort of like rogue alien that they've picked up. Oh, I just realized that's also the girl he likes. But, like, in addition to that, I think it'd be honestly way cooler if they didn't know about the voice. Or if the voice is not an alien. If he actually does just have a split personality. I really do appreciate, by the way, that the voice doesn't have more information than our main character has. It only ever, like, points out things that are obvious. Which is what really makes me think it might be a split personality. Either that, or I guess it might just be, like, you know, a very small, like, infant alien that he's incubating. Like, it only knows what he knows because it's only been there for as long as he's been there. Yeah, this is, like, I do appreciate how the series is able to convey the absolute feeling of being lost here. Okay. I mean, this is a cool moment, but why? For what purpose? Why did they shoot him out? I mean, I do appreciate series that, you know, that don't play down how insane it is to be in space or how insane it is to, you know, to be in zero G. Uh, Kamen Rider Forze, a series I absolutely adore, always had a moment where, like, whenever a character got added to the main crew, they would have, like, even if it wasn't that important to their storyline, they would have at least one moment where we see them out on the moon or, like, in space for the very first time because it's a series where the characters have access to space. And even if it's, you know, not vitally important, it's just like, it's such an incredible privilege to be able to, you know, walk around on the moon that I appreciated that they would, you know, constantly make that be a, you know, a cool, important thing every time it happens. Mm? Wait, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> These are some wild looking aliens. But I guess that's why they sent him out. Like, part of it was just to confirm, like, yes, you didn't hit your head or anything. You really are legitimately in space. And then also, like, check out these aliens. Like, these very non-humanoid aliens. Like, just to completely break him open. Like, to stop him from thinking, like, oh, this might all just be a dream. And they are repeatedly saying, you talk to yourself. So they definitely don't know about whatever's going on inside of him. Okay, so it does seem like they are space police, but then why? Why do they pick him up? Especially if they don't know about the voice. Okay, new members are chosen by consensus of the mother's computer, and the mother's computer just happens to choose you. Interesting. So, like, they themselves don't understand why, it just comes down to the computer. And the computer presumably does not explain itself. So that would also explain, like... Maybe the computer knows about the um the alien inside of him or whatever it is inside of him, but they don't. Hmm. Like, it's an interesting way to start things off. It's not my favorite for sure. Like, I prefer series I don't really like series that have a black box right at the very start. Like, you know, the black box of you can't understand what this specific thing is. Which is a fine line. Like, I like series where people know things but can't tell the main character things. I think that's an interesting dynamic. Like, you know, I literally can't tell you this. Like, if you know about this, you'll become a target. Or if you know about this, like, you know, this curse will activate or something. I think that's cool. But I dislike series where it's like, oh, all of us genuinely do not understand what is happening here. Because, I don't know. Something about that just bothers me. And yeah, it's clear he suffers from delusions. He's not suited to be an objective police officer. Because she's saying that, I feel like the voice has to be able to help him somehow, like during the tests. A perv? Is, that a, is this about that boing boing thing? 
God, that is, that's extremely harsh. Before long, Chuta Kokonose will become synonymous with disappointments. But okay, like, how does he do this? Is he going to hide the fact that there's this voice inside of him, or is he going to outright say it? Because either way, like, both of those seem like bad ideas. Oh boy, there's going to be a lot of misunderstanding. <laughs> because I do like this moment a lot. That he screamed that at the voice, but, you know, clearly she took it to... And she's... Is that actually tears? Is she actually crying over that? Hmm. Because she did seem, like, very hard-nosed at first, but... Is she softer than we thought she was? Okay. So, in the same way, like... The same way that she was not, you know, holding back at all. He also cannot hold back when it comes to her. For this test, you got to capture a certain criminal alive. All right. I think that's a good, uh, like, premise for the series, though. Like, it's not just killing criminals. It's specifically taking them in. Like, that inherently makes it more difficult. Especially if they all have, like, you know, crazy alien powers. Okay. We were all deemed suitable by the Mother's Computer, too, said we, the little Earthling, must have something we're not seeing. So, like, yeah, definitely physical violence is not going to work. The fact that he's really good at home ec is an interesting curveball. Like, is the way to defeat aliens going to be something that only works if you're really good at home ec? Because I can't imagine this being a series then where, like, he just fights. Either, either the voice is going to help him, or it's got to be his home ec skills that'll be what, you know, what allows him to do this. It can't be communication, because we've already set up that the voice causes him to miscommunicate with others. So it can't be like, you know, him just sitting down with the alien and having a good heart to hearts. Oh, show an unusual heat distribution for an earthling. So this voice might not just be a, sp a split personality. It might literally be like altering his physiology. Okay. One spot on his body has a slightly higher temperature. It's moving around the surface of his skin. So it's not even like it's integrated into his body. It's more like a parasite that is just, you know, talking to him from inside of him. Okay. Wait a minute. Oh my god. That's why it kept on saying blah blah. Because it, it, like it's not trying to be pervy. It's looking at her and it's it's able to recognize that she isn't human, that she is a blob of some sorts. Revealing SPH. Oh boy, that's a significantly less appealing form. It really was blah blah Chuda. <laughs> Okay, so, okay, arrest her. Don't kill her, just arrest her. Um, how do we do that? Hmm. So how? How is he going to do this? Like, I imagine then, it's gotta be the parasite alien. Ever since that incident, I decided I shouldn't do anything. God, I love that. I love that... You know, because generally a series like this would be in black and white, uh, we, you'd usually have to do the thing where you, you, know, you, you invert the colors, where all the gutters are black instead of white. But with this, because it's a color series, they can actually not even go black and white, but go like, um, like sepia tones. So it was, it was the voice that maybe killed them? Like, did they die? Okay, we, didn't, we don't get to see. But jeez. What can he do? Like, yeah, you're the only one who can save him. You gotta step up. But if I were in the situation, I definitely would not know. It seems like the voice is... Like, it doesn't seem like it's helping at all. But especially with that flashback. Like, I imagine that could also be a learning experience for the voice itself. Like, maybe this is what taught it. Like, oh, I should probably give better advice. But it hasn't, though. Like... It rarely ever gives advice. It just kind of, like, lets him know things that are happening. Okay, if you're really a part of me, then think of a way to save, to save Tatian. His SPH levels are rising. Like, they've brought up SPH multiple times. I assumed it was, like, literally light. Especially since, uh, over here, it was, like, revealing SPH. I assumed, like, okay, that must be, like, revealing lights. But then the teleporter also used SPH, and now he has SPH inside of him. Hmm. This is the first time I've been used to save another. 
Okay. It's like a cat rabbit sort of thing that's like growing out of him. Hmm. Well then. Okay, it's a monotalian. Monotalians were sent across the universe by the inhabitants of Griffiths, which flourished over four billion years ago. Okay. Oh, so it is meant to be like a contraction of monitor and alien. Hmm. That does explain why he was like why it was constantly giving him information. Like it wasn't really giving him advice, it was just like monitoring the area around him. And that's also why before it said, like, you know, the one on the right is no good. You're the vo I this must be an insane sensation. So you finally realize, like, oh, I guess I wasn't crazy. I guess that voice that's been in my head ever for my entire life has actually just been another thing. <laughs> well then. Okay, that's an interesting distinction to make. Like, it's not that it can attack, it's that it has defensive capabilities. Like, as long as Chuta, like, it wouldn't have, like, you know, a beam weapon or something, but it has powers that can be used to protect Chuta. It's like, I mean, that means he can fight with them, it's just... It requires him, it requires Chuta to put himself in danger, essentially. Stare at her body and imagine a way to beat her. Okay. What if we tried stitching her like some old dust rags? All right, so, like, is its power really just, like, limited only by his imagination? Because if so, that's a really cool power. I mean, that's one hell of an arrest. Yeah, I feel like they've got some questions to, to have. Like, they need to talk about this. This is kind of a big deal. All right, so he's a fourth generation Monotalian, which I... Like, does that mean that he was just, you know, the fourth generation that they made? You know, like, uh, like, you know, the various generations of iPods? Or is he the fourth generation in the sense that, like, the Monotalians went out into the world and had kids? Hmm. Okay, well, that's one hell of a first chapter. It was a big, thick first chapter, too. Um, so far, I'm not super into it. Like, it's, it's all right, for sure. Like, I think I'll Dive is interesting so far. But none, nothing really, like, gripped me about it. It was exciting enough. Um, oh, I probably should have copied the name so I can paste it. I mean, realistically speaking, I had more, like, there was more there to enjoy, but I didn't enjoy it as much as The Emperor and I. So I think I'd put that below The Emperor and I. Like, I think it's important to note that just because something is, just because there's a lot of something does not mean that it's good. Even though I spent the most time on that than I, than I have of, like, anything so far. Like, I can't say that makes it better than anything else. Anyways, moving on. Rosario to Vampire Season 2. Good. I enjoyed Rosario a lot. I think Season 2 is a bit rougher than Season 1 because... Nah, Season 1 had a more generic Shonen vibe to it. it like, uh, the series is about this boy who is a normal human being. He meets a vampire girl. This vampire girl is, um... <laughs> Uh, okay, so she has this binding on her, this rosary, hence the you know, Rosario to Vampire, where if she takes off the rosary, she goes from being the cute, innocent, pink-haired mocha to the wild, dangerous inner mocha who looks like this, who has the power to just kick people to death. It's very similar to, um, uh, if you are reading the new, like, Jumpstart series that just came out, Yui Kamiyo Let's Loose, it's very similar in concept to that. The difference being that there's also a supernatural academy full of uh, supernatural monsters. And of course, it is a harem series, but it's a harem series where the main character, like the main couple is very clearly defined at first. And like most of the fights in it boil down to Skune either like uh, distracting the enemy for a while until uh, Mocha, you know, turns into inner Mocha and then kicks the enemy to death or eventually like he starts to get powers of his own. Uh, season two then goes like it gets less like monster of the wiki it becomes more of a ongoing storyline. I didn't like that as much. It was still good. I still enjoyed it. Like I still read it week to week, but it 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 lost a bit of the specialness that the original series had. I do appreciate, though, that it was split into like separate seasons. That's something I think like uh, Webtoons do that a lot. Manga, not so much. Uh, Naruto Chibi Sasuke's Sharingan Legends. 
Uh, Sharingan Legend is not good. <laughs> I don't think I would uh, recommend the series. <laughs> it's rough. Uh, it focuses on uh, the second part of Naruto. I was just talking about how manga generally doesn't split itself into parts. Naruto did, you know, do part one and part two. Uh, it's very much intended for a younger audience, like the absolute youngest art audience that would be reading Naruto. Um, Rosario, on the whole, I'd probably put above Robot, but below Naruto. Whereas uh, Chibi Sasuke's Drawing on Legends, that's going really low. <laughs> did not, like, I did read all of it, <laughs> but that was definitely a morbid curiosity reading, as opposed to a I'm super into it reading. That's definitely at the bottom. There isn't, like, there is a chapter that involves a, like, two pages of just PPAP. Not even a parody of PPAP, but just Chibi Sasuke doing the PPAP dance. Just completely without there being another joke. Uh, Naruto, the seventh Hokage in Scarlet Spring. I've, I get, I, I understand why it is they separated it, but as you can see from the numbering here, uh, like, it is literally chapters 701 to 710 of Naruto. Like, when it was coming out, it was treated as just being more Naruto as opposed to being, like, a side series. And, which, I am I guess I'm of mixed feelings about that. Because it it is definitely a side series. It is, like, it takes place in the timeline of Boruto. And it is too, like, in my eyes, it is one of the best things that has ever been done in the Boruto timeline. It's a great series. Like, it is absolutely fantastic. Um, but then there's the big question, like, how do I rank that to the original Naruto? Because if we are calling it two separate things, uh, you know, I'm just going to put it on a Naruto. I can do that. Like, I'm just going to attach them together because they are literally the same series. Uh, Muyo and Roji's Bureau of Supernatural Investigation. I have, like, I've never read any of this. I know it recently got an anime adaptation. It was sort of like a Parasite the Maxim adaptation where... Like, they updated the storylines. Like, the stories all take place in the modern world now. I think that's interesting. Like, that concept is such a cool idea for reboots. It, I mean, it's very hit or miss, depending on the series, but I, I appreciate it. And if this was a series that was, war like, if that was warranted for the series, then it's probably pretty good. Either it's pretty good, or it has a lot of nostalgia built up around it. <laughs> Okay, so the bureau's already set up. Someone's coming up here. Uh, if it is like just a like an old school uh, detective series, but there are actual supernatural elements, that'd be pretty cool. Article one: Rie and Takeo. I've always assumed this guy was uh, was Muyo, but I guess he could be Roji. Like those are both odd names, and like this guy, I don't. I know he's the other person in the title, but I, I've never considered him to have a name, if that makes any sense. Like, of all the times I've seen that name, I've always associated both of these with the short kid. Because they're both very strange, distinctive names. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is a very, like, old-school gag style, which I appreciate. Like... Any style where the characters have, like, you know, facial expressions that stick out of their bodies, but it looks three-dimensional, is a style that I'm going to be interested in. Like, Torco does the same thing, I believe, from what I've seen of it. There's something very appealing to it, and it's also something that's really fallen out of fashion as of late. Like, even though we have had a big resurgence of, like, gag series, like, just, you know, gag series in general in Japan, like... As shorter series that you could read on the web have gotten more popular, we've gotten more series that are just like, hey, here's a gag. Here's an idea for a joke. Let's turn that into a series. Most of them don't use this art style, though, which is interesting. I mean, I guess that's a compromise. I guess, you know, thick manga magazines are thick enough that you could tear them in half and just read them like that. Okay, let's pull ourselves together. So this is Toru Muyo, and I'm assistant to Jiri, uh, Jiro Kusano. Wait, what? Neither of those are Roji. Oh, okay, R Roji is Jiro said backwards. 
Okay, that's actually really interesting. Like, his name is so normal that he had to reverse it in order to make it weird enough for the title. Yeah, that does sound very sketchy. Like, I assume this is a world where supernatural stuff is not, like, known to be real. So they would, like, they would definitely be seen by the vast majority of the public as just being con artists. Okay, feet feeling heavy lately. Does he already know? Like, was he already able to see whatever spirit is bothering her? Okay. So it's, like, it's not even that they are using, like, you know, just weapons to attack them. It's specifically, he just has to read out the law, and then he can destroy them. Yeah, what ghost do you want sent up and away or down to burn? Okay, so that wasn't her main problem. They were just, like, they're a telltale sign that she has something else wrong with her. Hmm. I imagine the pro like... As the series escalates, the problems are going to probably be like, okay, well, these are spirits that aren't technically doing anything wrong by the laws of magic. So they have to, like, find ways to work around it. Hmm. Because otherwise, like, if it's as simple as just reading out the law, I can't see how they would do a lot of, like, crazy fights or a lot of, like, you know, difficult fights. Okay. She's pale as death. Look at her hands. They're shaking. From where she was sitting, she could see it. Okay, so that's also interesting. Like, if, if he's not being paid for it, it's not like he's going to do, you know, pull out vigilante justice. He's not taking out spirits just because, you know, they're doing bad things. He will let them do whatever they want until someone comes to him and specifically says, hey, this is a problem. Okay, I think I know why. It's because I killed her. Well, then. So they were very deep friends. What happens? Like... Is this going to be the whole, like, I fell in love, we both fell in love with a guy, but I took the guy first, and then she killed herself? Because I can't imagine it was, like, a literal murder. Oh, hmm, so it's not, I mean, it might just be subtext, but the characters in the series, at the very least, are, you know, they do think this might be a Yuri relationship. Oh, that's why. But it still has to be suicide, right? Like, there's no way she intentionally killed her. Oh, this does suck, though. Like, I appreciate how relatable this is. It's not relatable enough that, you know, the average reader would be like, oh, yeah, I'd definitely kill myself in this situa situation, too. But it is an immediately understandable, immediately relatable situation of your friend moves on and you were not ready for that. Especially if it was, like, your best friend and maybe your only friends. Ah, uh, God, this especially sucks. Like, I've definitely been in both... Uh, both positions in this scenario where both like a, like one of my friends moved on they got other friends and i was the weird guy that you know they didn't want to hang out with with their other friends i've also been in the situation of you know having other friends and you know regaining a life and you know having people who really liked me back in the day when i didn't have a life who still wanted me to like not not have a life but you know they wanted me to spend more time with them when it's like oh well i don't have that time anymore i've got things to do Oh, this is extremely relatable. Oh, oh, okay. So, it again, like, it wasn't a murder, but she is literally the person that killed her. Oh, my God. That's actually a really good way of splitting the difference. Like, it is genuinely her fault. She did something extremely wrong. She literally killed another human being who only lo you know, who did not do anything wrong, who genuinely loved her. God damn. Okay. That's one hell of a way to start off a series, by the way. Like, that's extremely heavy. Okay. If you free her so she can pass away, no problem. But we should avoid sending her to the underworlds. I mean, the way Muyo said it before, like, hey, if it's someone, you know, is it someone you want sent away or, you know, sent down to hell, like... To me, that implied that, you know, you, you free the spirit and then whatever happens to them is whatever, you know, should happen. But do they have the right to do that? Can they choose who goes to heaven and who goes to hell? <laughs> okay. Executor Mio. Are there actually people in between there? Like, are those actual people or is he just, you know, envisioning that as like, you know, this is the difference between the two of us? Oh, actually, I guess this must be, like, a an actual supernatural ranking. Like, you have to work your way up until you get there. And so he's still working his way up. Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be that they report to actual people with all these roles. But just, like, you have to work your way up. 
Hmm. I really like the dynamic already. Like anytime you have a series where it's, you know, one person who, you know, the um the straight man and the crazy man. I love that. I think this is especially great because like Muyo has a lot of wackiness to him. He feels like a immoral gag character. Like in the same way that, you know, Bugs Bunny, for instance, frequently feels amoral. I think that really fits him really well because he looks super strange and he clearly doesn't care about people or spirits. So the, um, you know, the straight man here, um, Roji, is actually, I don't know, like, it's, it's a situation where, like, the crazier Muyo is, the more interesting Toji is, like, in comparison. Yeah, her friend's a ghost, and it's her fault. Okay, how's this going down? Like, I assume this is going to end with a happy customer and the spirit passing on. But to be fair, that's not necessarily true. It could be like, you know, in order to, you know, make the girl disappear, what they have to do is let her kill her friends. Okay. I thought using the laws and regular folks was out. What were you thinking? Jesus Christ. Okay, three days. Oh, God. Those coppers may have taken their last nap. <laughs> they might just be dead now. I really love this. Like, the series has definitely blended, uh, like, horror manga and gag manga, like, visual storytelling in a really neat way. Like, this does bother me in the same way that reading a Junji Ito manga bothers me. Like, without the big, super detailed jump scares. Like, just the low detail moments where it's just, you know, a character looking around. Or a character, you know, sitting around in a situation. It definitely brings that kind of horror manga to mind. No, don't run away. Okay. Oh, jeez. God damn, that's a really good design, too. Ah, uh, but okay, how's this gonna go down? Like, is it? I can't think it's going to be as easy as Muyo just jumping out and reading a law to her. There has to be some sort of actual emotional conflict here. I guess it has to be that she has to accept her and she has to say like, hey, I'm so sorry. I screwed up. I ruined everything. Right? Oh, boy. Ugh. Like, seeing the hands entering her flesh like just like squeezing around under her skin that is extremely grotesque also that shot actually i didn't notice that at first that their hands are literally fused together there Ugh. Oh, what did he do though it looks like he may have blown away the um the ectoplasm for the crimes of unauthorized spectral transmutation uh, transmutation and the impediment of magic law Okay, they're going right to hell, I guess. Well, hopefully they save her, right? Nope, it looks like they both went. Contrary to popular belief, Hades is a picky eater. Okay, so she didn't go down. God damn, though. Okay. Give me back my dinner, I'm taking you all. All right. I mean, I, I do appreciate the the, um, the heavy law um, <laughs> aspect of the series, like the fact that the law is, you know, you can bargain with it. Clearly, Muyo can use the law to his own advantage, like when he knocked out those completely normal human uh, officers. But still, I mean, he's also clearly getting off on this. I imagine if he truly didn't want her to be taken down, he could have, you know, he could do something. Ah. Uh... I won't let you go this time. I won't let go. She's going to go down there with him or with her. Oh, no. Oh, wow. 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 OK. So in that final moment, she finally decided, like, you know, never mind <laughs> or not. Never mind. But, you know, it's no good. Don't hold my hand. I don't want you to come down there with me. <laughs> she finally let go on her own terms. But at the same time, like it is literally letting go of her again and having her die again. <laughs> Okay, Takeo will go to the River Styx. So I assume, uh, what what did he say before specifically? I mean, I guess he never said where it would be. Like, he said Hades, but 
we're saying that this face is literally Hades. Oh, no, no, never mind. So he said straight to the underworlds. But rather than sending her straight to the underworld, instead, uh, she's going to um, the River Styx. Okay, so these aren't, like, this isn't the law book. It's Muyo's specific, like, it's the rules he wrote himself. Never meets with an old clients. Okay, so she slipped note at the very bottom. All right, that was honestly really good. Um, I've really wanted to read a, like, a classic series like this for a while, so I might check it out. Is it a Viz, like, I know it's a Viz series, but is it a Shueisha series? If it's not, I could definitely uh, take a gamble. No, it ran and jump. Never mind. I didn't know that it ran and jump, but I guess that makes sense. Honestly, I had a lot of fun with that. I would probably put that above Rosario. <laughs> like, again, this is comparing one chapter to, like, the entire series. So I guess I'll, like, I'll put less weight on the entire series. Like... It's more just like, you know, here's what I feel about the series now that I'm giving a recap about it. <laughs> all right, Black Cat, I did read. Well, I didn't read all of it, but I, I read the first little bits. I know it's about a guy who who is a sweeper, much like City Hunter. Uh, I, to be honest, I picked it up because I liked the name Black Cat, and I like the whole imagery around him being a stray in the city, but it, there's there's less cat content than I you know really wanted. <laughs> Dr. Slump, I mean, obviously, I've read some of it, have not read all of it. Good series. I get why, you know, it is the series that made um, Toriyama super popular. It made him famous. Like, it's a good series. It's a good gag series. Uh, definitely not going to read it on the channel, but I do want to read the entire series in time. I'll probably, like, now that I have the archives, that's the main thing. Like, before I didn't want to go to the library and I couldn't find, like, scans online for Slump. But now that I can legally read all of it, I may as well. <laughs> Toriko... I am definitely considering reading it, like, on the channel. I read chapters one and two a while back, and it's a it's an interesting series. Uh, one of my friends, Tequila Zaku, you may know him on the um, on the Weekly Shonen Jump streams as the owner X. What is it? The owner Zero X? Something like that. Um, he gave me a small rundown of the crazy stuff that does happen in the series. I've tried to forget about it, but the, like, the impact of it has lingered with me. So... Definitely will check that out. Dragon Ball, the time I got reincarnated as Yamcha. I have read it. I actually, uh, in addition to a, uh, to reading like the digital volume, uh, Mr. Donut the Donut did actually give me the physical volume, which I have, like, I think it's right here. Yep, right here. It's really good. The art in it is fantastic. Um, Dragon Guard Lee came up, like, his art style is fantastic. It is, I think, the closest I've ever seen anyone get to the original Dragon Ball art style. All right, sorry about that. Quick interruption. Um, getting back to it. Rosario to Vampire. I kind of already talked about that. I, Even though it did say second season down here, I kind of forgot about the fact that they would have the original here as well. <laughs> so I kind of blew my load on that one. But it all still applies. Like, if I were to edit this, I would just say... Uh... One plus two. Like, th they both have the same ranking. Oh, I guess I didn't put Yamcha up. <laughs> or Toriko, or Dr. Slump. Ooh, I really kind of just, like, stopped doing this, didn't I? Uh, Black, Black Cat, for what I remember, very average, kind of below average. Uh, Dr. Slump. But then again, keep in mind, I did not actually read all of Black Cats. Dr. Slump, extremely above average. Like, really, really good. Uh, Toriko wasn't super into it. Like, I'm interested in reading more, but in terms of, like, just raw, did I enjoy the first two chapters? Not that much, honestly. Like, I hear it does pick up a lot, though. Uh, Yamcha. <laughs> Yamcha was really fun. Like, oh, that's what I was just talking about before. I was showing you the cover. Um, It was... Fun, but not the greatest. Like, even by its own, like, even based on you, know, the 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 humor of it being like, yeah, it's Yamcha. You know, I feel like it leans a little too hard on that, and it leans a little too much on like the mechanics of its world. I hate what if stories where like, 
I enjoy what if stories where it is literally like, what if we change this one thing? And then logically things became, you know, are different because of that one change. Regardless of whether the logic is completely sound, as long as it, you can say like, oh yeah, it is a logical change that would occur based on this previous thing, that's fine. I hate series where things are just different for other reasons, though. Like, it just, at that point, it's not a what if. It is just an alternate universe where things are in general different. So that bothered me with Yamcha. Still pretty good. Still, like, realistically speaking, it was better than Love Rush. <laughs> I guess I'll put it there. Uh, already put Rosario there. Twin Star Exorcists. Read a tiny bit of it. Not super into it. Not into Exorcist series in general. Like, there's a lot of Exorcist series. So, like, I read, I think, the first two chapters or so. It's still good, like, for what it is. It's just, it didn't really scratch any itches I particularly had. Uh, Koa. This, I actually don't know anything about. I know it's also a Toriyama series, right? But, like, it's extremely chibi, like, way more so than uh, Toriyama's usual art style. Like, did he even draw this? Or I guess he may have. Like, it reminds me a lot of the, like, extra chibi design you get for some versions of uh, Dragon Quests. Like, especially this. This looks like a Dragon Quest slime. Did he do the art? I assume so. Like, anytime a like a uh, artist who does really high-quality art does something more chibi, it always throws me off guard. It's like, wait a minute, can you do that? When realistically, there's no reason why they can't. <laughs> oh, wow, this is so distinctive. Uh, Paifu goes on errands. So it looks like they're all school kids. Okay, they all say Batwing on them, so... I guess they all live in the same city with, uh, I assume their school is also called Batwing School High, or like, probably not even Batwing High, like they're probably not that old. Like Batwing Elementary. Oh, he's a ghost, okay. <laughs> it's so juvenile, like, not in a bad way, but like, I don't know, there's something just super, super kitty about it that is really charming. Let's you and me create world peace. <laughs> the most terrifying things. <laughs> Your angel is way too real. You scared me half to death. Okay, so it's not just like a, a world of only monsters. Like, that's just a normal human being, I guess. Yeah, your change will be 55 cents. So he actually owes the uh, ghost boy a nickel then. What? Why? Why? I mean, his mom's clearly going to understand that he didn't buy the watermelon. For what purpose? Okay, I'll just steal one from the fields. Their morality is very strange. <laughs> <laughs> That's no place to sleep. Can can he just play dead? Can he just act like, oh, I'm, I'm just dead. I'm going to have my friend roll me away now. Okay. How? Oh, oh. Okay, yeah, that's not the way his head is shaved. So he stuck it into his head? Is that a vampire ability? <laughs> also, I like the very small detail here that uh, playing the angel was like, you know, that was angel tag. Whereas here, like, clearly he's, you know, he's sweating over it. He's freaking out. He made a very clear mistake that even, you know, a new reader can clearly understand. Okay, that's extremely nice. Okay, but then they still don't have a melon. So what are they going to do? <laughs> um, I feel like that's not going to work because they're going to eat him. It just has to fool her until I get another one. But she also literally said, this will be your dessert. Like, they're going to chop him up. Oh, okay. That's a, okay, that's a clever gag. That's an extremely clever gag. Just as I started to wonder, the melon farted. <laughs> okay, wait. 
So this was a really good gag up until this point. I guess the joke is just, you know, he's being punished by being a watermelon. <laughs> or I guess he's being punished by being out in the sun, which is going to kill him because he's a vampire. <laughs> this last panel just feels very unnecessary. The rest of this, though, it was it was funny. I'm probably not going to read any more. Like, it was... Like, it wasn't the type of humor I really like. Like, even when it comes to, like, Hello Kitty and stuff, like, I like Hello Kitty, but I don't, like, read any, like, comics relating to Hello Kitty, because, like, they just, they're not super engaging or interesting. It's not like that's a big deal. Like, I get the appeal, it's just, it's not the kind of appeal I'm super into. So I'll probably bop it, like, maybe down here. It feels bad putting it next to Chibi Sasuke's Sharingan Legend, though. Because Koa, like, I could genuinely see a kid reading Koa and really loving it. Whereas I can't imagine anyone loving Chibi Sasuke's Sharingan Legends. That feels, this feels like an insult. I apologize to Toriyama from the bottom of, uh, from the bottom of my heart. That is not necessary. Okay, Cross Manage. I read a bit of that. Uh, it's interesting enough. Like, it's cool to see lacrosse in a manga because, La like, lacrosse in general is not very well, um... Like, it's not very well represented when it comes to sports series in general, which is bizarre because, like, you know, I, I'm i in Canada, so it might be different, but I remember lacrosse being, like, a real big deal for a long time, and there are some series that do do lacrosse. Like, I was uh, watching the original Precure with my, uh, my my boyfriend, and he mentioned at one point, like, oh, yeah, um, I forgot her name already, but, you know, Cure Black, like, she plays lacrosse, that is a thing. But it just, it doesn't show up a lot in media for some reason. Prince of Tennis, I feel like everyone's read a Prince of Tennis. It's just sort of like an, an institution. Not super into it, but like it is what defines sports manga to me. Claymore, all right. I read a bit of it. I I read it mostly because um, like in the early 2000s, when Berserk was coming out, Claymore was very much considered to be like the other Berserk, which it isn't. Like it, they're similar in that they're both. Um, they're both like. What I I wouldn't call them low fantasy, I guess, but just like they are dark fantasy series, dark fantasy with a Western bent, but they are a manga and they have really good arts. So in that, like in that case, I see the similarities, but they're very different series like Claymore, especially early on, has much more like outright supernatural stuff. While at the same time, it is I'd say it's actually less inventive than Berserk. Like when Berserk gets supernatural, it has a very interesting, distinct magic system and a very distinct like um, reasoning for why the um, you know the demons exist. Whereas Claymore, I feel, was a bit more cliche. Not necessarily bad, and I still have not finished Claymore, but like it, it didn't appeal to me as much as Berserk did. I might give it another run though. I didn't even realize that it was part of the uh, the show and jump thing. That's cool. Uh. This, I, I have never heard of this series before in my entire life. So I guess we're reading that because, like, here at Fire Punch, it's on the channel, kind of, a little. Um, actually, no, I think I moved it to the full Thermic Kitty experience. But Fire Punch, good. Kirko's basketball, not super into. Uh, when Mr. Donut the Donut started to read it, I read some of it myself. Could not get into it. Not interesting. Definitely not as good as Robot Laser Beam. But I imagine, like, near the end of the series, it probably gets a lot better. And then Jocko, fantastic. So before we get into any of that, let's read Ral, uh, Ral Omega Grad. Oh, whoops, that is chapter 29. <laughs> okay, one thing I do appreciate about this is that, like, I know it's, I guess it's out of necessity, but I do appreciate that a lot of these archives are literally like volume scans or the digital volumes just like, you know, put out for free as opposed to being like magazine scans or something, which I, I guess like Viz only has the volume scans like, you know, they would not, it would be more difficult for them to come out with a worse quality version. The only thing I dislike, though, is that like because they weren't, uh, you know, putting the series out as it was coming out. Like, if any series has color pages, they just don't have those color pages, which is regrettable. Whereas, like, with My Hero Academia, for instance, I'm pretty sure, um, I, I guess we'll see as I finish up this, uh, this video, but I'm pretty sure when you get to My Hero Academia here, they actually do have, like, the color pages in for all of those chapters, like, the really earlier ones. I think, right? I hope they do. 
Like if I read chapter one of my hero on the site and it isn't, you know, the version with the color spreads, that kind of sucks because that means you just can't get those color spreads like officially at all. Hmm. Okay. I assume that this is going to make more sense as I read through the other chapter. Okay, Tail One Promise. Uh, the character designs look cool enough. The art style is interesting. It reminds me a little of, um, you know, the, the artist for Death Note. A little bit. Like in the proportions for the faces and in the way the, the hair is drawn. But not really in terms of the art style. More like in terms of the art direction. Man, those are, those are some skinny angles. Okay. It has six eyes and 12 legs, a shadow. Correct, next one. 15 horns and seven stinger tails, a shadow. Correct. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I haven't properly seen the world of light apart from humans. Interesting. This reminds me a lot of um, uh, Plato's cave. You know, that thought experiment where it's a bunch of people locked up in a cave and they only ever get to see shadows. So they naturally consider everything to be shadows. And if you take one of them and bring them out into the real world, like once he gets acclimated, if you take him back to the cave and he tries to explain things, everyone who's only seen shadows will be super confused. Like, what are you talking about? What do you mean three dimensions? What do you mean colors? None of that exists in our world. We can't even begin to comprehend it. Whereas this, I guess, is more, I don't know, it has the same, it has a very similar vibe to it. The tutor part is interesting, though. So it seems like they really are locked up somewhere. Okay, so Ral and Grad are both the uh, the characters talking here from the world of shadow or the world of darkness. The Omega symbol here is interesting, though. Like Omega traditionally means you know the end or the final thing or occasionally like you know a complete thing, but mostly it's just the, the end. Hmm. Okay, so Grad lives within Ral's body. Okay, so they're locked up in some sort of like, it looks like a bathosphere almost. You do want to come out, I need to be certain. Can you control the dragon? Hmm, I guess that's the big question though, like... Is this true, or did the two of them just come up with this story because it'd be the best way to get out? Ah. Oh. I know that I'm here because I can touch my body. I can roughly understand my form, too. The rest is just the wall and conversations with grab in my head. I think this is pretty insane. Like, um... I was reading uh, The Last Sayuki, which has this big moment involving a kid who's like thrown into pitch black and how terrifying that is. But I think this is extremely different because it's not like he was thrown into darkness from nothing. Like he can't imagine color. He can't imagine vision. He seems to be from a, you know, a world of shadow. In which case, like, I think this it's closer to just being blind, like being blind and confined as opposed to like losing your sight and being confined. Hmm. I've been in this place for 15 years since just after I was born. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, that's... This is such an interesting starting point for our main character, assuming he is our main character. Like, he's the title character at the very least. Hmm. Yeah, like, it seems like the one thing that would be able to get him out is if... He manages to convince them that, yes, he has the power of the Shadow Dragon, and they will be in assets. Ooh, okay. Ah, oh, this is some good arts. Uh, the, sh the shadows so far, like, they don't look that interesting, though. I, I, I do appreciate that they're not just, you know, formless black, which I think would have been a bit too lazy, but these designs are also extremely generic. Okay, so she does seem convinced, but is her faith well placed? All living beings can be divided into two types, those belong to the world of light and those born of darkness. Okay, so I assume that she said this out, like, this out loud, but then the rest of this is just narration. Like, this is just for us, the readers, but she's not actually saying all of this to the king. 
because he most likely already knows. Just like their world, creatures of darkness, demonic beasts, or monsters lack a, lack a third dimension. We call them shadows, legend. Hmm. Okay. So they actually lack a third dimension. How does that work then, though? Because this one's clearly gripping a three-dimensional being. Like, they're not just flats. Okay. Eventually, they learn to take forms. So a creature of the First Order can manifest its own shape from the shadow of its host, provided it has the permission of the hosts. Sure. A creature of the Second Order consumes the flesh and spirit of the host and is thus able to manifest two shapes at will. Then the third form, Transformatives. Hmm. And this one does not actually, like, it's kind of cut off there. We don't know what it, like, what it actually is, like how you get a Transformative. But okay, I mean, if I had to guess, like, Parasitic, it seems like they do, like, progress. Like, it goes from being a Parasite to being a Predator that can switch forms. And then, I assume a Transformative would then be, like, one that no longer has to shift at all. It's just, like, it's consumed the power of both forms together. Okay, a Shadow would be incapable of faking the kind of conversation Ral carries on from his, from his prison every day. Hmm. So thirds devour seconds or other living beings and absorb their abilities. Hmm. Okay. So shadows cannot manifest in absolute darkness. So the fact that Ral has lived without light for 15 years guarantees the dragon has never ta taken shape. Okay, so it's never manifested. But it, it clearly is a capable of, like, prolonged human-like conversation. Like, even going back to, um... Uh, what series was I just reading? You know, L-Dive, where the, the parasites there was, like, it seemed like it was definitely, like, a non-intelligent being, or it was vaguely intelligent, but it was less intelligent than a human being, whereas Ral and Grad both seem to be equals from the, the conversation we've seen so far. A dragon appeared from the infants. In a flash, it scorched the mountains as far as the eye could see, even melting the stones. Oh, okay, so, yeah, literally, like, he was still so young that he had never opened his eyes. The dragon, though, has manifested before. It hasn't manifested since, but it hasn't been able to manifest at all before. Okay, so this is, like, legit. It's not like the, the shadows are attacking from the shadow realm. It's like, no, they've already taken over. Or, like, yeah, they've already taken over half the world. That is ridiculous. So, okay, it, it looks like they're gonna need the power, then. But that's the big question. Like, it's constant companionship, but it's is it positive companionship? The two of them just want to get out. I could easily see, like, like, Ral can control Grad, but for what purpose? Why? And also, why would he want to help other human beings after spending 15 years in pure darkness? Hmm. <clears throat> I guess it comes down to the way he sees it. Like, if he thinks about it in the opposite direction, like, they've kept him alive for 15 years, they've taken care of him. Hmm. I, I just, I don't know what the mindset of a human being like that would be. It's so completely different from my own lived experience. Also, what is with this? I guess it's like, like, Grad's actually, like, tattooed his body. Like, it's fused with him. Okay. I think that makes sense, though. Like, at this point, Ral and Grad have spent more time together than... Uh, Ral's ever spent with his father. So yeah, like, sure. Parents love their children. Miss Mio taught me that. What does a father deserve who imprisons his son for 15 years? Oh. And hmm, the baby didn't know, but the dragon did. The dragon never imagined could, a father could lock up his own son. But is it him saying that, or is it the dragon then? Okay, I mean, I do think that, like, I guess I don't know what to think. Like, I understand why everyone wants to kill him. Like, it's terrifying, sure, but I, I want to believe in him at the very least. Okay, well then, that is, I don't know if I'd call that a power move. I guess it isn't. It's more of a Tarzan move. It's more of a, like, literally not knowing anything about human beings move. Like, sure, why is, it, like, is this proper conduct? Sure, why not? And I do appreciate that, like, she is taking this in a very mature way. Like, she fully understands that, yeah, he doesn't know what he's doing, or, like, he knows what he's doing, but he doesn't have the same conditioning as anyone else. He's not doing this in a sexual way. He's just curious. 
I mean, I sure hope they don't, they don't start doing it on the grounds. I'm naked. Should I be embarrassed? Or yes, but if you, de if you defeat shadows, you'll be draped in the richest of robes. But even then, like, he wouldn't understand the idea of being draped in robes, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> is he actually going to do it? Like, is, are they literally going to just do it before he goes out? Okay, how about this? I'll get rid of the shadows, and when I'm done, then you'll teach me about women. <laughs> this is such an interesting start. Like, definitely did not expect this. Okay, so they do recognize him as just being a third. Like, he is, he is absolutely a third. Huh, but if he's a third, then how is Ral still alive? Like, if he's been drained of his life ever since he was a baby. I guess just due to that unique condition of them being together for 15 years, like, it's been more like symbiosis, even if uh, Grad is way more powerful than a symbiotype. Oh, even, like, with the blades he ate. Like, it's not like he deconstructed them. He just kept them inside of himself. Huh. And even there, like, it's not like a third is so obscenely special that we can't see any of them. Like, that one is just straight up a third. Okay, that's so cool. Like, the, the dynamics of shadows so far have been real cool. Though, the idea of a shadow itself casting a shadow that is part of its body is a bit mind-bending. Like, if I were to create a series where shadows could manifest, I probably just wouldn't give them shadows at all. But that's interesting in its own right. Like, can you manifest a shadow's own shadow? Okay, well then. What's their big move here? Even its mane is enormous. So it looks like Ral used this, like, weird malformed blade to slice it in half. But then, hmm, like, is that blade just part of uh, Grad then? I guess so. Like, Grad himself didn't really seem to do anything. He just manifested the blade as, like, a part of himself. For the sake of women, I'll fight all the shadows. <laughs> okay. So, especially with, like, this line, I've got a few targets in particular. It implies that uh, the line he said before about how Grad doesn't like the, uh, the current Shadow Queen. I guess that might be accurate. I was a lot more suspicious at first, but it seems like they're definitely okay with fighting for uh, humans. And I think it would be just a cool, seri uh, cool series if it was just, you know, the two of them learning about the world and Grad eventually, like, I don't want Grad to betray them at all, but I do want him to be fulfilled in some way. Like, if the big goal is to have Grad eventually become the Shadow King or something, that'd be cool. Damn, overall, really, really good first chapter. Like, my god. Definitely gonna read more. Um... Is the Shueisha series? Almost certainly. Uh, Viz occasionally picks up like a series or two that is not a Shueisha series, but yeah, published by Shueisha. Oh, it was illustrated by Obata. Okay. Huh, I didn't know that. Anyways, uh, really, really solid. I guess I'll put that like... It wasn't as appealing as Muyon Roji's. It reminds me a little of like... The, um, the feeling of, oh, hey, it actually updated. Well, I've already gone too far with this. <laughs> I've got to commit to it now. Like, it has the aesthetic of Chainsaw Man, or, like, it has the, like, the writing style of Chainsaw Man, but the, uh, the visuals are definitely a lot better. Like, they're still very inventive and unique, but in a, like, more polished way, I might actually put that... Yeah, like, it's not as good as Muji and Ryo's. Like, Muyo and Ryo Roji's is genuinely super interesting. I really want to check that out. Whereas Ral, uh, Ralgrad is cool enough. But I don't know if I'll get to it or not. I mean, it is a lot shorter, so probably not a bad idea. Anyways, I already went through these. Jocko, I wanted to give a big shout-out. If you like Dragon Ball, please check out Jocko. It's really good. Like, it's, it's Toriyama at his best. Or at his modern best. Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist. I have a couple volumes of this. It's, you know, it, it's Yu-Gi-Oh! It's the manga for Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's called Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist because it is, like, um... I believe Viz took the original Yu-Gi-Oh! and just called it Yu-Gi-Oh! But, like, then they stopped it when you when we hit like the part that's the uh, the new anime you know the original anime you know the one that isn't season zero started off at and then that became Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelists uh Takama Gahara 
I remember that one. What was what was the premise of this? Because I remember reading this, but I'm going to be honest, I don't remember liking it. I remember just being like, oh, this is definitely here. It didn't like we didn't get it in uh, the weekly show in Gem or anything. It was just like as volumes. This was the first thing I checked out as part of the archives. It's like, oh, hey, we have the archives. We have stuff I've never seen before. But yeah, I'm not a big fan of this. I feel like it's unfair for me to like, I don't want to do a reaction to it because I've already read it. But at the same time, I feel weird about ranking it. So I guess I won't. Uh, Fire Punch, really good. Like, I really need to get caught up. I know there are multiple volumes that are out that I have not read yet. Uh, Kuriko, mm, not good. I liked... I mean, I read it for a while, but honestly, I didn't even like it as much as Red Sprite. Red Sprite was at least unique. Jocko is dank, extremely dank, though it's not as good as, like, the top-tier series. Like, it isn't a Dr. Slump. It's really good because it's a short series that was written, you know, like, from a very fresh perspective for Toriyama. So, maybe I'll put that, like, below Robot X Laser Beam? Or Robot Laser Beam. Sorry, you're not supposed to pronounce the X. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean, I was never a big fan of the manga. I haven't read a lot of it because I watched the anime. And I think the, the anime is legitimately a better experience, even with the filler. Like, the filler really helps with selling what makes the duels fun. Whereas the manga is okay, but it can get a little mechanical. Especially when, like, because it doesn't follow all the rules. So it somehow manages to be mechanical without actually like sticking to the mechanics of the series. Uh, so let's put that like right below Jocko. I, I don't know. I guess I'm just if I'm just talking about the manga, like what I read of the manga, then it deserves to be below Jocko. Like if we count everything the manga covers, which includes like all the all the anime stuff that I did see. It's definitely a lot better. Uh, Takamagahara. Like, I guess the biggest sin of this is just I don't remember it. I don't remember what it was. I read it, but I don't know anything about it. So <laughs> it wasn't memorable. Definitely below Kuriko. Uh, GX. I never read the GX manga, but again, I saw the anime. So <laughs> I don't even feel comfortable with putting that on this list. D. Gray Man. Definitely uh, read a bit of D. Gray Man. It's another Exorcist series. More interesting than usual, but it's still an Exorcist series. Um, at this point, I feel like I've already... I've gone as far as I can with the, uh, the April Fool's nature of this without it just dragging on. So let's, let's just skim through the next few. I haven't read Gun, uh, Gunblaze West. That's the thing. <laughs> I also, like, I might read some of these, and I don't want to do a ton of chapter ones in this video which is an april fools video that will almost certainly not be on the channel after april fools i'll probably just make it archive exclusive so no one will ever see it so let's do a quick rundown gunblaze rest haven't seen it time killers also have not the uh, the art style reminds me a lot of uh, blue exorcist though nisekoi read a bit of it not a big fan a lot of people tried to like they tried to draw a line between nisekoi and um we never learn but I do think We Never Learn is just a distinctly better series than Nizukoi in every way. Siren, read all of it, fantastic. A lot of people really want a Siren anime still. I, it's almost certainly not going to happen, but I would love to see a Siren anime. Especially because like it's not that long. And I think you could honestly pack all 145 chapters into 26 episodes if you had to. Like It'd be a fast 26 episodes, but you could still do it. Especially if you're willing to like rewrite things a bit. Um, Veroni Kenshin, read a bit of it, did not finish it. Interesting series. I definitely want to get back into it. Like, my experience with Kenshin has been very slapdash. I saw a bunch of the, uh, the anime, but like random episodes. I also read some of the uh, manga, but I couldn't get super into it. I know a lot of what happens in it, but not a ton. Uh, Pretty Face, read all of it. Really good series. It's about this kid who gets hit by a car. Uh, gets like surgery to look like the um i believe is it it's either the girl he loves or it's the dead sister of the girl he loves something like that <laughs> uh 
again, um, really fun. Really enjoyed it. Uh, Seventh Guarding, I, I do want to check this out. From what I've heard, it's interesting. It's also, I believe, a web exclusive series. Yu-Gi-Oh! This is the original Yu-Gi-Oh! This is, you know, before Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelists. Uh, I've read all of it. It's good. It is definitely like, even if you don't like Yu-Gi-Oh! If you don't like card games, you're still going to like the, the original Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, it's very much more of a mind game slash death game sort of series. Barrage. Haven't read this one. I definitely want to do just like a standalone video with this. This is, uh, I believe it's one of the two series Horikoshi did before he did My Hero. The other one was that one about a zoo, which I'm also very excited about because I love animals. Uh, Tagami Bachi or Letter B. Read a bit of this. I think the art style is really interesting. And like the, the lore of the series that I've seen so far, like just of the first volume, it's real neat. It's extremely distinctive, too. Uh, Dragon Ball, I assume, uh, is this like Dragon Ball, including Dragon Ball Z? Because uh, I know Viz makes a distinction between Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. It looks like this is just OG Dragon Ball, which fantastic, arguably better than DBZ. Like it is a very different sort of series. But I do think like the DBZ uh, anime is better than DBZ manga, whereas I think the original Dragon Ball manga is better than the original Dragon Ball anime. Like the, ma the original manga has this perfect balance between fighting and gag action, whereas DBZ gets a lot more dry. And I think that the, uh, the anime does a really good job of adding in filler that helps bulk it up, that helps make it less dry. Like a lot of my favorite moments in DBZ come from the filler or like their combination of the filler building up a character and then that character getting the canon moments that make them exciting. Yu-Gi-Oh! are really interesting. This is a sequel to the original Yu-Gi-Oh! that um, was it by Kazuki Takahashi or was it by an assistant? I think. Uh, can I see what the cover says? Because I think it might just be done by someone else, was it? Yes, it was written by Akira Ito, based on Kazuki Takashi's Yu-Gi-Oh! manga. Uh, was it drawn by uh, Akira Ito as well, though? I think so. Like, I remember the art style being very, like, similar to the original, but not quite there. Um, if you know what the Wicked, uh, the Wicked Gods are, those three came from Yu-Gi-Oh! R. I remember reading Yu-Gi-Oh! R entirely because um, the original physical version of English Weekly Show and Jump uh, once did a thing where like each issue would come with one of the three wicked uh, wicked gods and I thought those were so cool like they all have really interesting abilities they're all clear parallels to the Egyptian god cards and I just wanted to see a story where they were used and as it turned out reading the actual story they came from was a lot easier than finding fanfic of them <laughs> zombie powder is by um, Taitkubo man behind bleach not great it has a lot of like s you, you can see some of the like uh, the DNA of Bleach in there, but it's not good. I don't think it would have ever come out in the West if you hadn't, like, if we hadn't said, you know, like, if Bleach hadn't gotten super popular. That's the only reason you should pick up the series, is if you like Bleach. Because it definitely has a lot of the feel of Bleach in it. Death Note, fantastic series, like, 9 out of 10, maybe 10 out of 10. Nah, definitely an 8 out of 10. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, first half, definitely much better than the second half. Assassination Classroom, amazing. I've done reactions to all of Assassination Classroom. You can find them in the full Thermite Kitty experience. It's a absolutely amazing series. Like, it is one of the best Jump series. It's, it's insane to say that, because Jump has so many classic series. But it is, like, from the very start, it was an instant classic. It has everything I could want from a Jump series, while also not feeling cliched. Uh, Busa Rankin, extremely cliched, not into it. Uh, these are both the full color versions of Dragon Ball, I guess. Hmm, I didn't know we had those like separately as like things we can read. Okay, so I guess this is just the Saiyan Saga, and then this is just the Frieza Saga. Don't you tell me to join to read? I have an account. Oh, I did that thing where it said arrow finding account, so I can't even do normal weekly show and jump after this for a little bit at least. Uh, Sandland. Read the first chapter of this. It's interesting. It's another Toriyama series. Came out after Dragon Ball Z. Um, it's about this kid who I think is named Belzebub. He is a demon. They're hanging out in the uh, desert. There's like one last element of humans. It's, it's interesting enough. I'll definitely read more of it. 
Yu-Gi-Oh! Zale. Uh, eh, not into it. Was not super excited about it. I think Arc 5 is much better. Uh, DVZ, I mean, already kind of talked about it. I don't think it's as good as the anime version. Like, if you have to choose between reading DVZ or watching the anime, I would honestly say watch the anime and don't even watch DVZ Kai. Like, just watch the original Dragon Ball Z. If you see a filler episode and you don't like it, just skip it. But, like, you can find the uh, the Dragon Boxes. Like, the American remastered, like, Blu-rays of Dragon Ball Z for, like, not ridiculously cheap, but cheap enough. And they do look a lot better than Dragon Ball Z Kai. All You Need Is Kill, absolutely fantastic. Another series drawn by uh, uh, Obata. An adaptation of a great novel, which I have not actually read. I've heard that the novel is extra, extra good, but the manga adaptation, fantastic. Um, it, it was adapted into the, um, the ah, what was it again? The Hollywood movie uh, Edge of Tomorrow, which is also labeled in some places as Live, Die, Repeat. Um, very good adaptation. Probably the best manga adaptation that has ever happened. School Judgment? I don't remember what this was. I remember reading it. I definitely read it. At the school, there's only one way to settle a dispute in the court of law. Was this also. Yeah, art by Takashi Obata. Man, Obata's done some real, like. I guess I just didn't read a lot of this, though. So maybe I'll check it out. Not right now. Like, I've already kind of given up on reading all of these on video. <laughs> but, like, it's short enough that I might check it out. Plus, this girl's dressed like, uh, dressed like a pre cure. And that automatically makes me want to check it out. Um, Millennium World? Hmm. I... Is this the, um... Huh. If I had to guess, I assume this is, uh, like, the final arc of Yu-Gi-Oh, then. Huh, I didn't know they gave it, like, a separate tagline, though. I guess it makes sense, because technically this is not about, like, dual monsters. It's not about the card game. Uh, Restoration? Uh, is this the one that was... No, the one that was airing recently was a uh, Kyoto arc, right? Hmm. I mean, I have I haven't read any of this because I didn't read the original Kenshin, <laughs> or I didn't finish the original Kenshin, I should say. Five uh, Ds, pretty okay. I still actually I I saw the anime. I did not read the manga. From what I understand, like the manga versions of each of the Yu-Gi-Oh anime is, are like extremely different. Nura Rise of the Yokai Clan. Read a bit of this. Wasn't super into it. It's not an Exorcist series. Like, it's a, it's more of a yokai series, but it had that Exorcist series feel that I wasn't super into. Also, at some point, Kyoka Suigetsu shows up, which I guess is an actual Japanese thing. I thought that was just a Zanpakuto from Bleach, but I guess it isn't. Bakuman, fantastic. Now we're just kind of getting into, like, you know, modern series, so I don't know if I should be like... Eh, you know what? Why not? Let's commit to this. Let's commit to this. This has ceased to be a April Fool's video, and it's now just my thoughts on all of these. Uh, Bakuman, fantastic series. Arguably better than Death Note. Not as popular just because it's about manga. Like, it's a more specific, like, topic. It's less action-y, but it is fantastic. If you would, like, I think the anime adaptation is pretty good too, but I think the manga, just by virtue of being a manga about making manga, is real, just, like, fantastic. Uh, Bleach. Bleach is a series I really love, but I, I know a lot of people don't. You really do need to get into the correct mindset for Bleach, though. Like, it's a series where the chapters snap by very quickly, but there's a lot going on. And, like, there's a, it's mostly about the style. There's a lot of interesting stylistic things to do with Bleach. Like, if you've read Bleach already, do yourself a favor, go to Wikipedia, go to the three... Um, there are three separate articles covering all the uh, like the chapters of Bleach, and just look at the titles. The titles in Bleach are absolutely mind blowing. Some of them are just insane, but they all have some sort of interesting meaning. Like Tight Kubo looked at each of those titles and was like, "Yes, this is a good title." Some of them are unironically good titles. Some of them are very ironically good titles. Some of them have a pattern. Did you know that every single time someone in the series like goes from one realm to another? And they like specifically have to break through. Like obviously they're not using like an official door or something. When they, whatever they break through, that uh, chapter is called the Shooting Star Projects. Like the Shooting Star Project, and then like there's a tagline for it. There's there's a lot going on in Bleach. If if you, I also do think like for having 530 chapters, you can read all of Bleach really quickly. Like 
I think it would also take you a lot longer to read all of Bakuman than it would take for you to read all of Bleach. Just because of the pace of the series. It's a very fast read. Hikaru no Go. I read some of this. I read it as it was coming out in English in the um, physical Shonen Jump. It's alright. Like, I never actually learned how to play Go properly. I knew, I knew it well enough to actually follow the matches, but not well enough to play it. And I've forgotten most of it ever since then. It has a very Yu-Gi-Oh vibe to it, though, in the sense that uh, Hikaru is possessed by a spirit who is really good at playing Go, and as like as the series goes on, he learns how to play himself until eventually, like you know, the, the you know the big end goal is that he wants to be able to play on his own without any spiritual help, without having to cheat, quote unquote. Genkaku Picasso is not a series I've ever heard of. I did not know that this was a thing. Sometimes a picture can tell more than a thousand words. And there's a lot of, like, point chapters in it, too. Okay, I might just straight up read that as a video, then. Black Torch, read the first volume of it. It's alright. I read it mostly because I knew there was this cat spirit in it. It's okay. It's not that interesting. Definitely wouldn't follow it. Uh, Platinum End. Oof, not a good series. Bad series. Very, very bad. Would not recommend. In the slightest. Do not read Platinum End. <laughs> I was excited at first, but, like, and Obata's art is still amazing. Like, Obata's only gotten better and better as an illustrator. I think Platinum End is the most beautiful, like, like, the most beautiful thing he has ever drawn. Every chapter consistently has something really gorgeous in it. But the, like, the plot is hot garbage. Absolute trash. Um, what was the name of, um, do, 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 uh, Sugumi Oba? Yes. I don't know what happened to Oba. Because Death Note, good. Bakuman, excellent. You know, it has its problems, but overall, it's an excellent series. Platinum End, hot garbage. The worst. Like, oh boy. I mean, check it out if you want. I thought the first volume was interesting enough, but it starts off much more childishly than Death Note. In a way where, like, even Death Note, you know, it was, it always gave you a little wink. It was always like, yeah, you know, Light is a child. The things he wants are ridiculous, and eventually he will get his comeuppance. Whereas with Platinum End, it feels a lot more sincere in being super edgy. And there's a couple of chapters where it just, like, it comes to a conclusion where it's like, yes, this is the correct thing. And it's like, man, this is some bad advice. I would not want to give this advice to teenagers. <laughs> Overall, horrible writing, beautiful arts. World Trigger, read a bit of this, read the first volume, I think, because I was trying to get back into it. It's interesting enough. Like, I like it to an extent. I don't think it's great, but actually, did I record that? It might be on the full Thermite Kitty experience, but I don't think so. I don't think I recorded this. It was generic. Like, you know, it's another two world series where, you know, there's an organization dedicated to destroying things from one world and there's a lot of jargon. And the main character gets a power from someone else from the other worlds. Eh. Seraph of the End. Um, I've heard a lot of this from my very best friend in the whole world. Apparently, this series changes genres like about every volume. <laughs> like, it's very wishy-washy. It's interesting in its own right. I know it's a vampire manga, and I know that it has a lot of very dedicated fans. And there's a lot of interesting lore mixed up with it. I've always been curious about it. I might check it out at some point, but it, like... Of all the genres and all of the, uh, like, status quos that it has had that I've, you know, been told about, none of them appealed to me. None of them made me think I want to read this. Uh, Blue Exorcist, I've mostly caught up to. I, like, if you check the full Thermite Kitty experience, I have everything from Chapter 1 and 2 somewhere in the Chapter 100s. There's been a very long flashback arc that I don't know if we've gotten out of yet. And that's where I kind of stopped. Not that I dislike the series, but just, you know, like... Once it stopped being in Weekly Shonen Jump, like in the magazine, once I, they started separating all the chapters so I could just read whatever I wanted, I decided just, you know, not to do that. Because most people did not read them as they came out. So, uh, in a little bit, I'll probably do a Blue Exorcist reaction that's just, you know, all the new chapters, just all in one little bundle. Anyways, uh, One Punch Man, fantastic. Fantastic getting worrying. Not gonna lie, I'm a little eh about, like... Everything post the tournament with, I guess, because like the pacing has been very strange. I still like every single chapter. Like I have a bit of fun time with every chapter of One Punch Man, but I do feel like 
either Murad is really stalling, which makes sense since, you know, one has not really done anything past the very end of the Edgar arc. But it's either that or he's just, you know, like he's putting a lot of effort. He's putting a lot of love. I think One Punch Man is a fantastic manga, but the pacing has been very worrying. Like, I would rather just have him do another filler arc like the tournaments than, you know, to drag that, you know, than to drag out like canonical things right now. Like, I'd love it if he just got to the end of Garo, you know, relatively recently, like within a year or so of uh, of chapters. And then after that, or I guess a year might be a little, you know, too little. But I'd like it if he just, you know, did at the end of the Garo arc and then jumped into a filler arc. As opposed to really, really, really drawing it out and doing a bunch of side fights, which I've not really delved into the hell of side fights, but I know it's coming up. I know it's going to happen. Dragon Ball Super... Much like Dragon Ball Z, I feel like Dragon Ball Super, the manga, is inferior in every way to Dragon Ball Super, the uh, the anime. And to be fair, Dragon Ball Super, the uh, the manga, I believe starts off with the third arc. Like, there are two big movies that were then readapted into the anime. Those arcs are really bad. <laughs> Would not recommend. They apparently cost more to make than the movies themselves and look awful. So, would not recommend those. Like... I would suggest watching the first two Dragon Ball Super movies and then just there's a certain episode I could tell you it later on, but you, you can just jump right into the series from that episode and it's a new arc. It's all good from there. Like it has its ups and downs, but overall, I think it's good. I think the manga is overall just unfinished. It has some interesting ideas, especially in one of the arcs. One of the arcs is more interesting than the anime in certain ways. And like, you know, it is you know, cut down, but cut down in a way where you get all the good parts without any of the filler. I can see why some people liked it. But the um the second most recent arc was absolutely atrocious, like the worst, not nearly as good as the anime. And the current arc they're on, I have not been ke keeping up with it, but they're finally delving into something that is completely new to the manga that has not been animated. From what I've heard, it seems interesting. So we'll we'll check that out eventually. Or I'll check it out eventually. I don't want to read on the channel. I've deleted my Dragon Ball Super reactions already because I, I don't want them to be around. I don't enjoy the Super manga at all. Anyways, yu gi Arc 5, pretty good. I was following it for a while as the um the digital Weekly Shonen Jump volumes or, you know, issues were coming out. It's okay. I wasn't ever super duper into it, but it's good. It's good for what it is. My Hero Academia Vigilantes. Probably better than mainstream My Hero Academia at certain points. <laughs> like, uh, My Hero Academia, I've got a lot of problems with it. I'll talk about them when we get to My Hero Academia, but overall, I think Vigilantes gives me more of what I want in the sense that it takes place in the same universe, but it's about, you know, someone who is a kind of hero, not a legitimate hero, but more of a vigilante, as the title would imply. And that gives it more of a classic, like, Marvel Comics vibe to it. You know, it feels sort of like a street level Marvel Comics series. You know, like, um, oh, you know, like, you know, um, Iron Fists or, um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of things that aren't Spider Man because Spider Man, it just, this doesn't feel like Spider Man, but it feels like a lot of those, like, run of the mill, like, early 2000s Marvel series. Not in a bad way, but just in a, like, yeah, there used to be a lot of those. Just, you know, a guy with powers learning to use his powers and he fights crime and occasionally a more important hero shows up. Like, it's got a neat vibe to it. And I think it has an important place in the world of My Hero Academia. Especially if you read the volumes, there are these uh, plus alpha chapters that come out sometimes that don't focus on the vigilantes characters at all. They just focus on characters from the main series. And those are fantastic. Like, that's the kind of world building I really, really love. I also appreciate, by the way, that if you just want to read My Hero, you can just read My Hero. You don't need to read Vigilantes. Vigilantes only makes My Hero better. It does not, like, you don't have to read Vigilantes to understand anything in My Hero. Dr. Stone, probably my favorite thing consistently in Weekly Shonen Jump right now. It's amazing. Uh, basic premise, uh, the world gets turned to stone. <laughs> like, every human being gets turned to stone. It's not quite that simple, but, like, a thousands of years pass. This are of two main characters, Senku and Taiju, break out of the stone, and from there they just have to rebuild civilization. It's a combination of rebuilding civilization and breaking other people out of the stone. Well, there's that, and there's also, you know, there's some other conflict that happens there, but the main draw of the series is the science. The series delves deep into just, you know, 
raw science like how can science work and how does the development of a civilization work like not necessarily in a civ sense it, like i keep saying the development of a civilization but it's not really about that it's more about just like science and how humans develop like how can they like there's a problem here how do we solve this problem a lot of the human human conflict then gives rise to more and more developments that come out it's I'm, de I'm explaining it in a bad way. I've recorded it for too long. But Dr. Stone is one of my favorite series in Jump. It is extremely, just like every chapter. If, if you like science, you like Dr. Stone. If you don't like science, but you would just like to see some people doing cool science things, you'll like Dr. Stone. Like in the same way that you, know, you don't have to like science to like Mythbusters, but Mythbusters is a science-based show. In the same way, I think Dr. Stone has that appeal of, if you just want to see people doing cool science things, then... You know, you can just sit back and watch it. And there's a lot of comedy there. There's a lot of great character interaction. It's It's got everything I could want. Interestingly enough, this updated on March 24th. Everything else, you know, updates. Uh, maybe I caught him, like, mid-update, actually. Maybe that's why. Either that or I don't think Dr. Stone was supposed to be on hiatus this week. Uh, hi, Q. I read the first couple chapters. Didn't get into it. Don't really find it that interesting. Not a big fan of team-based sports series in general from what i've heard it's really good though uh boruto not super into it it's a little like dragon ball super in the sense that i really like the uh boruto anime from what i've seen of it like it starts off way earlier than the boruto manga and there's a lot more developments but like they both take place in the same world they're mostly I, they are separate canons but like, they tackled most of the same things. Characters from the anime are in the manga as well. Like, Boruto's class is, you know, consistent across the anime and the manga. It's, it's interesting enough. And I do like that what they're kind of trying to go at, but I think the monthly format is real not good. Like, the art style is eh, and the fact that everything has to do, take place monthly is rough because it feels like it's still trying to move at the pace of Naruto, which was a weekly series. So either we do like, you know, little mini arcs that aren't that important that take multiple months to get through, or we focus just on plot stuff, but then it gets too heavy and we don't get to, you know, spread our focus around. Uh, Ruby, the official manga did not like this. Not a big fan. Um, uh, I read the original Ruby manga, which kind of adapted a bit of volume one and the, um, the trailers. Like I've seen all of Ruby, by the way, up to volume six at the very least, which is the most recent thing as of when I'm recording this. I think Ruby's okay. It's not the greatest thing your teeth has ever done, but it's it's all right. I think the manga's art style does a bit of a disservice to it. Like the um the Ruby anthologies are much more interesting, even though they have a wide variety of art styles. I feel like this art style is very distinctive, but the distinctness is a bit of a problem at times. Like let's quickly flick through Volume One. Like the coloring, kind of watercolory, kind of interesting in its own right. But, mm, like, it feels like it's kind of trying to do the Bleach thing of having big white backgrounds and not a lot of focus on things, but it doesn't convey the amount of action that Bleach does. And also, there's a lot of things that are very clearly done in, um, like, done digitally, like this close-up, where it just, it feels kind of lazy, it feels weird. I don't know why this was done digitally, like, why not just draw a, a line here? Why do the fake zoom? It, it feels, eh. Feels very eh. Yeah. Not super into this. Uh, Boys Over Flowers. I've I've never gotten into Boys Over Flowers. Like I know it is it is a manga. It's an anime. Yeah, it's an anime. There is a J drama. A lot of people I know really love the J drama, but I just could not get into it. So maybe I will though. Like there are a lot of cute boys here, and it seems like it's a cool reverse harem series. Hell's Paradise Jigokuraku, I did read a bunch of that on the channel. It should be, uh, some of it should still be in the full Thermic Kitty experience. I haven't read anything since that point where I stopped, though. Like, I want to get back to it, but again, I, I feel weird about doing anything that is, that is just for the archive. It just, it reminds me that, oh yeah, the, you know, the, uh, the people who license the series, you know, Shueisha does not want me to do reactions to this, so why should I bother? That plus, you know, people didn't really watch those videos very much anyways, but it's a good series. It's interesting enough. 
it's a uh, like convicts plus their um like their bodyguards slash you know um retainers i guess are sent to this island called Gokuraku in order to find the key. i think it's immortality i think it's immortality and so it's kind of half death game half exploration uh, food wars goodish series i feel like it's really on the decline though <laughs> like if you like cooking if you like just series with explosive um like twists it's a good series some people like the fan service i've never been too in into the fan service it's okay for what it is but overall like i like the series for the cooking and for the inventiveness of it i feel like um the power scaling of the series got a bit crazy with the most recent arc though so but like that doesn't mean that the old arcs aren't good it's just like you know check out their, the old arcs and if you like it keep on reading until you don't want to read anymore like i still want to read it i'm still very interested in the current arc it's just it's not as good as the previous arcs the Promised Neverland is fantastic. If uh, if you've been wondering about re watching the anime, like the anime is a good adaptation, but I would highly, highly suggest reading the manga. Read just the first two chapters of the manga, and like especially with chapter two, you'll understand what the vibe of the series is. It is one of the most unique things in Jump. Like uh, Sasaki-san, the former head of Japanese Weekly Shonen Jump, current, I don't remember what his position is in English Weekly Shonen Jump, but he did move from Japanese Weekly Shonen Jump to English Weekly Shonen Jump. His, uh, he recently, or not so recently, but he said that Jump was looking for things that are unjump like. Like things that have the Shonen Jump spirit, but are unjump like, that aren't, you know, something like Naruto or Bleach or, you know, Dragon Ball. I think Promised Neverland fully encapsulates that. It's very different. It's more psychological. It's more grounded. Like it's grounded and yet it's not grounded. There's a lot going on there. Yet, fundamentally, it is still a jump series, and I think that's really interesting. Like, it presents a world that is very unjump-like, and scenarios that are very unjump-like, and a little, like, more extreme than I would expect from a weekly show and jump series. But it consistently has this positive outlook, and this outlook of, you know, what if we apply shonen spirit to this? What if we try to do what is best, even when, you know, it looks like the world will not allow it? It's that optimism it's like it's a combination of optimism and extreme darkness that I think makes the series very unique. We Never Learn is one of my favorite series still, like not top tier favorite, but I always enjoy it. If you ever check out my actual non goof, not April Fool's weekly show and jump reactions, then you'll know that I like We Never Learn. I tried to start off the live streams with We Never Learn whenever I can because it just makes me happy. It's a harem series where the main character, like the end game girl, is definitely not foreshadowed. Like a lot of people try to apply harem tropes in order to say like, okay, it's this girl or it's this girl. But there's really no telling which girl it's going to be. All the girls are interesting. They have interesting personalities. And the focus of the series is definitely on the comedy as opposed to the, uh, the romance. Like there is romance, but that's not the focus. The focus is on the like almost Three's Company-esque uh, comedy. Like, I always like bringing up Three's, Com uh, Three's Company in relation to We Never Learn because, like, We Never Learn definitely focuses on the ridiculous uh, misunderstandings, not just on dramatic misunderstandings or, you know, slapping the main character in the face and calling him a baka. It's a series where everyone is, you know, intelligent, but also extremely stupid, where anyone can be, you know, on the receiving end of a blow or where anyone can be, you know, the, uh, the bokeh or the sukomi, the, um, the funny man or the straight man. And it just has a great positive vibe to it. Like, I also just like studying. And studying is a not the most important part of the series, but it's a part of the series, all right. Like, it gives me that feeling I had whenever I was at school, studying with friends, working together to try and, you know, overcome this horrible test that we had to go through. It was like, yeah, you know, it brings back those memories of good experiences at school. <laughs> if you don't have any good experiences at school, you might not like We Never Learn. Uh, Nailation is a hacking series. It's about this main character who wants to be a big baddie. He wants to be an, like not an evil cracker, but he likes to take out other baddies while still being a bad guy himself. It's interesting in that regard. It, it doesn't have the same morality as Death Note by any stretch of the imagination, but it's interesting in its own right. And I like how like all the hacking is relatively realistic. You know, it's just the tiniest bit above what you might think would really happen in real life. Which I appreciate, like, it has that shonen extremity that I appreciate, you know, it's not like, uh, it's not like Mr. Robot, 
But at the same time, it's just within the realm of possibility. You can actually look at the series and imagine like, okay, what would I do if I were a hacker? <laughs> like, or like using what I know about hacking, how could you get out of the situation? It's very interesting. And I think it manages to be kind of edgy without being too ridiculously edgy. Like the main character wants to be a bad guy. He wants to be the villain, but he never like delves super deep into it. You can still root for him as an anti-hero. Jujutsu Kaisen apparently is pretty good. I didn't give it a fair shake when I first read it. Like it's definitely another Exorcist series, sort of. Or it's an Exorcist slash Yokai series. From what I read of it, it felt very cookie cutter, very generic. From what I've heard, it gets a lot better, but it, it didn't leave a good impression on me at all. Black Clover, uh, it's it's good. It's definitely a series that took a long time to grow on me, though. Like, any series that can get to 100 chapters or beyond, I think, is going to be pretty okay. That's just the law of, you know, of writing. You know, you just get better as you do more of it. So, like... It's a good series, but at the same time, I can't say it's like it's better than what Jujutsu Kaisen might be once it gets to chapter 199. Or I can't say like. Like the early chapters just didn't really hook me, but it was only after pushing through those and reading further and further on that I really fell in love with it. So like with any of the series I ranked badly, if it got to one, you know, chapter 199, maybe I'd like it as much as I like Black Clover at chapter 199. Still interesting series. I appreciate that the main character, like it, a lot of it is about teamwork, like actual teamwork, not just the main character being really strong. Uh, Hell Warden Higuma. Okay, very average. It reminds me a little of Jujutsu Kaisen with just how kind of cookie cutter it is, but it has a neat aesthetic. I'm interested enough in it. But like, of all the series I currently read, it's the one that's always on the brink of being dropped. Actage, fantastic. Um, it's a series about this actress who has a personality disorder. You know, there's something not quite right with her. She delves into acting far too deeply. And the series is actually about her, like, it's not saying that that is a superpower, but it's saying that, you know, she has a very unique circumstance and that if she learns how to act properly, she can both, you know, it's like therapy for her. She can learn to be a more normal person. While at the same time, she can take advantage of the super deep method acting that her condition allows her to, you know, to engage in. It's a series where, like, you really do have to start at the start and read, like, an arc or two to get if you'll be into it. Because it has very long arcs that are all about, like, character interaction. There's not a lot of super flashy stuff to, you know, to make you hype or excited. When I do my usual weekly show and jump rankings, it tends to be relatively low, but it's still a good series overall. Ah, Chainsaw Man is about Chainsaw Man. <laughs> what else do you have to say? It's got a very brash aesthetic to it, which I appreciate. Um, like, it's by the same person who did Fire Punch, and you can definitely tell. Like, it has the same attitude as Fire Punch and the same, like, design, but it is more jump-like. Like, it's less, you know, filthy. It's less, you know, outright, uh, you know, scary or... You know, it, it's filled with less objectionable content, but it still has some objectionable content. Some stuff where you'd be like, is that really in Jump? It's extremely neat, and I would highly recommend it. Like, read the first couple chapters if you're not into it. If you're not into what the main character's, like, initial big goal is, then you're not going to like the series. Yui Kamiya Let's Loose, very new series. It's, uh, I already made the uh, comparison with um, Rosario to Vampire. It's similar in that it's about a girl with, you know, a sealed side and a true side. I think it has a better uh, balance of a sealed to true, though. And, like, the true side is actually a character of her own. And the, like, main male character doesn't have any superpowers. He has, he has a, like, circumstance of his own that makes him an interesting character. And the, the character dynamics are just interesting. Like, I am into the series. I do think that it has a lot of potential to it. It doesn't really make me laugh, though. Like, it is a rom-com, but it's not, like, on the tier of We Never Learn. It's definitely much, much lower ranked. But it's okay. Uh, the last Sayuki is... An interesting. I still feel kind of shaky about it. Like, as of Chapter 5, it's still kind of, like, setting up its premise. It's definitely the kind of series where... You're going to fully understand what the series is going forward after the end of the first volume, I'd say. 
Like, it's already set up how the series works, what the monsters are, how to fight against them, but it's still clearly, like, developing things. I think it's neat. Like, I'm still quite intrigued by it, and I want to read more. My Hero Academia, good series. A lot of people have praised it quite a bit. It is definitely one of the new, like, pillars of Weekly Shonen Jump. Even though, like, a lot of people don't think it is, I feel like it kind of is. Like, more so even the... Like, how do I put this? Even in Japan, like, the editors and stuff weren't super into My Hero. They never really pushed My Hero that much. But just through its own goodness, it is able... It has been able to, you know, to climb up to the same ranking as something like Black Clover, which has had a lot of editorial push. So just for that alone, I really love it. And it is a pretty good series. It makes some questionable decisions here and there. I think some of the recent arcs have not been as good as the earlier ones, but overall, it's still fantastic. One Piece is, I mean, it's One Piece. I don't know how you can p properly rank One Piece at this point, like, objectively. Just because, like, you know, just as, like, something like, you know, Black Clover is hard to compare to something like Neolation because of the massive difference in chapters in Legacy. Like, how do you compare My Hero and One Piece? There's this massive gulf. It's still a fantastic series, but I do think each individual arc of One Piece does not... Like, I'm not into each individual arc of One Piece as much as I'm into, like, individual arcs of most other Jump series. It's not that they're bad, it's just that I think that Oda's having trouble, like, getting the entire crew engaged. And he's having trouble, like wrapping up arcs in a way that feels completely succinct and that, you know, gives every character their fair shake the same way that, you know, like Skypea or like Thriller Bark got wrapped up. I just, I haven't been into a lot of those arcs as much as I've been into like the previous ones. It's still a good series. I still like it, but like, I definitely don't like the current arc as much as I liked other arcs. And Kimetsu no Yaiba, I read the first volume, wasn't super into it. I know a lot of people really love Kimetsu, but Eh, I mean, it's another yokai slash uh, exorcist series. It is what it is. <laughs> I might give it another shake later on. But overall, that is... Um, that's me killing time before jump starts, and now my throat really hurts, so I don't think I'm going to be <laughs> um, jumping into Weekly Shonen Jump. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, April Fool's, I guess. This was meant to be an April Fool's joke. It kind of got out of hand. I kind of just ended up betraying my original premise altogether. But it was a fun time. I'm sure no one's going to watch this. If you got to this point, please comment in the uh, in the description. Uh, there should be some sort of funny term that you use to prove that you got this far. Uh, okay, use the term overtones in your comments to prove that you got to this point where I'm saying the sentence. Anyways, uh, April Fools, I guess. I don't know. What am I doing? What is my life anymore? Thank you all so much for... Uh, supporting the channel. I'm happy that I've been able to get to yet another year, even though this is technically a new channel and not the channel that was around for my last April Fool's video. It's it's still been really fun, and I hope that I can, like, do some of these other series. Like, I do want to do some, like, uh, like some archive-exclusive things for, like, you know, School Judgment, for instance. Like, some of these shorter series, because now that they're here on the, on the, like, the Show and Jump archives, there's really no reason, like, sure, you know, pay your $1.99, and you can read basically any of these series in a single day. Anyways, so, I, I guess that's where we're at. Hope you have a wonderful April Fools. Um, enjoy all the goofs. I hope whatever Google's doing is fun. I guess I'm just gonna cut it off. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye for now. Nya nya.